Hi everyone, welcome back to Memories for the People. I'm George Favar and I'm pleased today to take you back to the 1980s, 1990s at Walt Disney World's Epcot Center where I'm going to give you this tribute, this tribute show to my favorite ride of all time at Epcot Center. It's a ride that doesn't even exist anymore. It was such a great ride that it actually opened a year after the park opened. Uh, yes, I'm talking about Horizons. My most favorite ride of all time at what was then called Epcot Center. It was a part of Future World, okay? We know of Epcot differently now. It's changed over the years, but back on October the 1st, 1983, we had the Horizons ride open and since I lived in Jacksonville Florida at the time my family and I from time to time would visit Epcot Center and boy I remember the first time I went through Horizons here we see what it was envisioned to look like so much was put into it I uh, as you can see what really amazed me even just approaching the ride was the building. It really looked like the future. Made perfect sense because I was in Future World at Epcot Center. Now Horizons was between the universe of energy and the world of motion. Here we see a table model of Horizons. So you're approaching this futuristic building and you have to remember that in the 1980s, I was a kid, so this had even more of a profound impact on me. Here we see it under construction. I can remember in the early 1980s because I was, I believe I visited towards uh, the latter half of 1982, earlier part of 1983. And I could see it under construction, but I didn't pay a lot of mind to it. It wasn't until I came back for a second time to Epcot Center that I finally experienced Horizons. And it was sponsored at the time by General Electric, which was in a 10-year contract from 1983 to 1993 with the Walt Disney Corporation to sponsor the ride, just like uh, other... Uh, companies sponsored, uh, corporations sponsored different rides. For example, Kraft sponsoring the land. General Motors uh, sponsoring what was then the World of Motion, which you'd see to the right, we now know it as a test track. And here we have the beautiful monorail uh, coasting through, through uh, the park. There's something that was so magical about Disney and so much that the people of Disney and the sponsorship of General Electric that that made this possible and, and took you to essentially, right? It seems like another world, right? And then off to the left here, you see the universe of energy, okay? I guess I look back and I think about these rides as being something different than what's there now. Now, when you go into Horizons, you get the feeling that you're about to go on a journey because you see the future port. Okay, so you see some of the different places that that uh, you could choose to go in this in this in this this uh, this ride. Now, the great thing about this dark ride and what's what makes there are two things that make it great. It talks about visions for the future, and at the end, you, well, the passengers in your car, get to choose. Now, I had some interesting experiences in these cars uh, because when you jump in the car, remember, you know, you're traveling with your family uh, for a pretty substantial period of time going from Jacksonville down to Disney. And you have, even though you're crammed in a car, you have some of a bit of a space. But when you get into these, when you get in there with your father, your stepmother, your half-brother, and you're crammed into this, into this car, a uh, ride car, you're, you're in a very intimate, personal setting. And here you see the map that shows how you'll wind through. You start off with the, the ideas, the, the fictional visions of the future. And then uh, you start really looking at things and you, you, you see how it winds through, how it looks at the futuristic 50s. And then all these different, the way things are envisioned at certain points in time to what the future down the road would be. And a really 
a really great ride. And so it really, it's the ride that really captured my imagination. And you have to understand, it's the 1980s. So you're kind of getting the impression of what people uh, years ago, uh, even prior to the 1983, 1984, 1985, you know, around there, thought what possibly the future could look like, which itself, when you look at when you look at ride design, would have been further back. So, and you see over time, it somewhat changes, right? The, and you can go through, and I would go through the ride at different times. Sometimes I, w I would end up in a uh, in the different visits I had to Epcot, one time I think I was alone in the in the car, and I was I made my selection. Another time I was with so someone, and and she said, "Go ahead and pick, <laughs> okay, someone else." So, uh, and it was a ride. I believe one time I went on a second time uh, by myself. It was that good, okay. As a kid, it was fun, a lot of fun at Epcot Center in the 1980s. Now here, envisioned, you know, back then it was envisioned robots were actual manual friendly robots that and you can see uh, the butler prior and you can see the dishwashing uh, robot and uh, so it's kind of funny because it never seems like you end up with the dishwashing robot right <laughs> so um, but th these were ideas of the future and, and now one thing to to mention and it's one thing in some ways that might cast a pall over the show in some ways is there are these dramatic visions of the future in space now, you have to remember, in 1983, we had the Space Shuttle. In 1986, in January of 1986, of course, we had the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. In 2003, we had the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. Ultimately, the Space Shuttle program ended. Okay, And though astronauts do spacewalks, in fact, just today I was looking at some informa uh, a picture on Instagram uh, from a, uh, uh, that, that showed a beautiful picture. And you get great pictures of Earth. You get, you get the feeling today that these grand visions of the future are not ultimately what was realized, but it sparks your imagination. Now, of course, there's a journey into imagination just across the way in future world, but I feel almost like the spark of imagination I had as a youngster and as a teenager going into the 90s, uh, I really enjoyed it. And then at the end of the ride, you get a choice in your ride car with uh, the people with you to decide on whether you want to see a short film about an undersea colony, a space colony, or a uh, farm in the desert. The idea being a vision of the future. And it would be a film of a, of a, of a model. And it was considered one of the largest models at the time uh, for, for filming. And so you would get this great you get this great ending, and then you would walk out of this dark ride out into this beautiful um, walkway. And I believe it to be one of the best uh, exits out of a ride. And of course, doesn't that leave you with the best impression at the end? Having been able to have decided what you wanted to see at the end, and having seen these visions of the future, especially as a youngster in the 1980s, what an amazing time. Of course, you know, time catches up with you. And ultimately, on January the 9th, 1999, Horizons closed. The sponsorship with General Electric had ended in 1993. And so ultimately, due to uh, the sponsorship ending, and then also there was talk that there was issues with the roof on the Horizons building, it was ultimately bulldozed and replaced by Mission Space, which I considered, I, I went on Mission Space once. It's in to keep it positive, I'll keep my remarks on Mission Space Limited, other than to say it was the only time as an adult uh, that I actually got ill on a ride at the end uh, and didn't and I d didn't ever want to go back on. Uh, it just, it, and, it, you know, it is what it is, right? Uh, things move on. Time moves on. Uh, and Horizons was a great, a great ride that I enjoyed with my family. And just even doing this show today brought back great memories, being with my family in the 1980s and imagining the future. The future isn't always what you expect, but there is a brighter tomorrow. I do know that, and I have seen it. And so I know that there are these great tribute uh, videos uh, and more in-depth shows on YouTube about Horizons. I'd, I'd like to encourage you to check them out. Uh, because it is something that was a great accomplishment from the Disney Imagineers and the people that put it together. And it's something that 20 years later, I'm still here on YouTube, and I'm actually talking about it with you today. And if you can imagine 20, 30 years later, what an impact it's had 
on people. And we can always strive to provide the best in entertainment and the best in thought-provoking entertainment in the future. And I hope that that will be a continued objective at Disney and elsewhere. I want to thank everyone for watching. I've got a lot planned for uh, Memories for the People, for the channel. I would encourage you to please subscribe, share if you like this, let me know what you think. And uh, I'll be looking at uh, various, I'm going to be looking at television, I'll be looking at movies, I'm going to be looking at American culture and society uh, throughout the broadcasting of on this channel through the remaining uh, year of 2019. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. See you later.